So, hello to everybody. Uh, so, the purpose of, of these lectures uh, will be to introduce uh, some uh, basic concepts about uh, hyperbolic complex manifolds, uh, especially projective algebraic manifolds. And then uh, there is a very strong relation with uh, algebraic differential equations and jet bundles. And uh, to study these questions, it is necessary to, uh, to investigate the, the curvature, um, the sections of those uh, jet bundles, and so on. And so um, a large part of the lectures will be quite uh, in introductory in terms of, of basic concepts of uh, complex differential geometry. And at the end, I will uh, try to explain a uh, rather recent result that was obtained in 2010, uh, which is one of the first uh, general results concerning the so-called green griffiths conjecture. So I will explain this uh, maybe today or maybe tomorrow, <coughs> at least the, the question. Okay. Uh, before starting, really, I would like to make a poll to see exactly what I should explain and what I should not explain, because I don't want, of course, to get uh, many of you bored with uh, elementary facts. But on the other hand, uh, it might be necessary to introduce some elementary facts. So, uh, so what about the concept of, so I will ask you to, uh, raise hands if you, you want to have some definitions about this. Uh, so what about uh, the churn connection, churn connection on the holomorphic vector bundle? So who needs uh, definitions about this? So raise hands. Okay, so many of you. Uh, okay, uh, what about the general concepts uh, of analytic and uh, algebraic geometry? For instance, uh, sheaf theory, cohomology of sheaves. So. Okay, so most of you know about cohomology of sheaves. I will not really use much of it, so maybe I will recall a few facts. Uh, so maybe more, um, larger part of the audience comes from, I don't know, analytic geometers or more algebraic geometers. So I will also need, uh, in many places, uh, pluricybarmonic functions. So this is pluris of harmonic. And of course, in relation with this, uh, closed positive currents. So who would like to have some definitions at least of this? So, OK, so quite a number. Okay, so um, now let me try. Uh, okay, uh, so I will start with the uh, geometric stuff. Okay, so uh, let X, so I will introduce about uh, holomorphic vector bundles and Hermitian metrics. So uh, we start with a complex analytic manifold. I will denote by n the complex dimension. Oh, by the way, uh, concerning the nodes, 
so they should be, they are not ready yet today. They should be ready very soon, uh, maybe tomorrow or on Wednesday. Uh, right now, if you want to, uh, to see details of what I'm lecturing today, you can already download uh, many sets of notes which I've written along the years, which probably contain too much material, but uh, certainly completely cover what I will lecture about here. <laughs> so, um, of course, I, I will just uh, pick out of that uh, what is just necessary here so that you're not overwhelmed by the quantity. But anyway, uh, if you want to see immediately, uh, you can download uh, so the, from the uh, website of the Institute. So you go to my web page, and then uh, there is a, um, a page which is called documents. Dot HTML, and here you will see uh, especially notes on. Uh, I have given uh, long ago uh, notes in Santa Cruz on uh, hyperbolic stuff, and there are general notes. Uh, well, there's an online book on uh, analytic geometry and so on. So, you, well, you can pick whatever you need from this. Uh, okay, so uh, I will denote uh, by Z1, Z2, Zn local holomorphic coordinates. And then, of course, you have the well known concepts of PQ forms. So a PQ form is just a, uh, a differential form, which can be written locally following way. So sum of uij of z dzi wedge dzj bar uh, for multi indices i of length p and j of length q. So this is just to fix notation. So here, uh, this means, as usual, a wedge product like this. And i is an ordered multi index of, of length p. Okay, and similarly for dz bar j, so then you have complex conjugates. And then, of course, uh, the uh, usual uh, exterior differential d. Uh, if you compute d of u, then it splits in two parts, uh, del u plus del bar u, where del u is of type p plus 1q. So you have one more term, dzi. And del bar u is of type pq plus 1, with a uh, fact that del square equal del bar square is 0, and del del bar plus del bar del is 0, which follows uh, this is equivalent to the fact that d squared is 0. OK. So this is. And then uh, here in this theory, you can pick coefficients, which, according to your needs, can be just uh, smooth functions or maybe distributions um, or measures or whatever. So uh, here, it depends on, on your needs. So uij are, are complex functions. Some regularity, usually smooth or or just dis distributions. Okay, so now if you want to do some geometry, 
you have to introduce uh, holomorphic vector bundles. So it just means that you have a covering covering of x by uh, open sets. in such a way uh, that uh, E is locally trivial and is a vector bundle. Uh, namely, uh, you have trivializations which identify here uh, the so let me call this by by pi uh, so the restriction is just by definition uh, the inverse image so what is located over the open set u alpha so the picture would be like this so you have x here and then you have open set u alpha and then uh, your vector bundle is just a bunch of vector spaces which are all isomorphic to C to the R, where R is the rank over C. And then uh, the isomorphism here is given precisely by, by this map theta alpha, which depends on, on the on the open set uh, u alpha. Okay. And then the, the condition that E is holomorphic so uh, you may have on the intersections okay uh, so you take two sets from the covering here. And then here, you have two ways, because you have uh, two trivializations. So you, you take an element xi in the fiber of E at z. And then uh, it is sent to some element in CR by uh, the composition of, of theta alpha by the second projection here. And then similarly, and then the condition is that uh, if you look at the second projection of uh, transition automorphism, so the transition automorphism is just uh, theta alpha composed with theta beta minus one. Uh, this map here is just given so this is the essential condition sorry it's C here uh, I formula like this where G alpha uh, is an inv invertible matrix uh, of holomorphic functions. So this is an invertible. This is a holomorphic invertible matrix. And then uh, Now you're considering uh, PQ forms with values in your vector bundle, say smooth ones. So this is just a section which I will denote like this, infinity of x into lambda pq 
phi star x tensor E. And of course, because uh, locally uh, E is trivial, uh, you can write such a form locally as, so you can identify by theta alpha to some some form a u alpha which is a cr valued and again uh, with the uh, this uh, transition property so u alpha of z is g alpha beta of z times u beta of z but now of course uh, each u alpha is a pq form so it can be written if you really want this uh, written completely uh, explicitly, you have to write something like this. Uh, okay, and then uh, you have uh, the multi indices, and then uh, you have some uh, so um, dependence on z, and then you have the differential forms dzi with dzj bar. And then you still have to pick here a, a frame, a holomorphic frame. So th this would be the local uh, formula. So where E lambda, where lambda ranges between 1 and R, is a holomorphic frame of your uh, vector bundle E. OK, and then the coefficients here, uh, i of length p, j of length q, and lambda is between 1 and r. OK. Now, uh, I think I would just use uh, one set of boards because Then if you compute the D bar operator, well, uh, because uh, G alpha beta is holomorphic, in matrix form, you get this. Because you have D bar of G alpha beta, which is 0. Therefore, the collection of forms like this define a globally defined D bar operator on sections here. So you have you get a, a global D bar. But uh, so this is a so-called type type zero one uh, because it maps PQ forms to P club Q plus one forms. But what is important is that you do not get a similar operator uh, of type one zero. You don't have. Because uh, if you apply del, uh, it doesn't work. Of course, if you apply del, uh, del of g alpha beta is, is not, not zero, so you cannot do this. So you can't do this. So because you cannot do this, uh, one is going to, uh, to give an ad hoc definition. So by definition, a, a uh, smooth connection on E is an operator. Well, you could define this in arbitrary, uh, in arbitrary real bundles, but I'm, I'm just translating in the complex case. 
So it would be an operator D, uh, which actually decomposes in two types. So it will be a sum of, of a part which is of type 1, 0, uh, a part which is of type 0, 1, and uh, D prime uh, goes uh, what you expect for del. So I don't write because it's long, so it goes from PQ to uh, P plus 1Q. And D double prime goes from PQ to uh, PQ plus 1. So I actually mean something like this. OK, but, uh, but they don't necessarily coincide with uh, del bar. But of course, uh, because we have at hand uh, this uh, del bar operator, we will always assume, in fact, that we take this part to coincide with this del bar. So in fact, because we have a complex structure, so uh, a basic requirement, so requirement that uh, D is compatible with complex structure, So uh, the part D double prime here should be equal to the del bar operator. Of course, it, it should be a connection. So uh, you, you should have the uh, Leibniz rule. that if you compute d of some function or some form uh, so you have a, a wedge product here uh, where this is a scalar scalar pq form and this is a, a e valued say uh, p prime q prime form and of course, as a result of the wedge product, you get an e-valued p plus p prime, q plus q prime form. OK, and then you require that uh, this is just uh, the standard formula for exterior uh, derivative, that uh, you have du wedge s plus minus 1 times the degree of u. So the degree of u in my notation here is just p plus q times u wedge. And now uh, you have an evaluated section. So there is no small d, but you may have uh, to use this connection d. So you require, you require this formula. Sorry, S. <coughs> so uh, D, uh, here you have a, a U is a scalar form. So because it is a scalar form, it is just an ordinary differential form. So you can apply on it the ordinary uh, exterior derivative. So here in this notation, a small d is the ordinary the usual uh, exterior derivative. And, uh, the, uh, this uh, Leibniz rule is the basic uh, property that should be satisfied by a, a connection on a, on a holomorphic vector bundle. It need not be holomorphic, actually. It only need to be complex, but I will only consider here uh, holomorphic ones. Okay, but if you would uh, omit holomorphic, if 
even if the G, G, G alpha beta are not holomorphic, you can still make this definition. Okay. Of course, if it is not holomorphic, then you don't have this D bar. And then, uh, okay, I cannot make this requirement. Okay, so now let us compute. So suppose suppose you take a section uh, with value z e So uh, you can write it, of course, with a holomorphic frame, or even without a holomorphic frame, with a frame. So you have components times, uh, of course, uh, each point, okay, where uh, E lambda is a frame for E. given by a local trivialization. OK, and now, uh, well, this can be considered just as a, uh, you can view this as a 0, 0 form with values in E. So this you can view because this is just a trivial bundle. OK, so, uh, so this can be viewed also as a wedge product. And therefore, if you apply a uh, Leibniz rule, you get that you must have ds by Leibniz and then uh, this is uh, of course some degrees so uh, P plus Q, S lambda, wedge, D of E lambda. But now, uh, of course, uh, if, if E is holomorphic, So let, let me first, uh, so in general, so not assuming anything, uh, D E lambda is just a one form, is a one form, which is E valued. So you can write it. as uh, some uh, matrix well, you, you can write it as a sum of a, a lambda mu e mu you can express that in terms of of the frame and uh, a lambda mu are one forms and you are going to introduce the matrix the matrix of one forms I will denote this by, rather by gamma, maybe. It just expresses a uh, differential of the frame in terms of the frame. OK, and then uh, what you get here is that if you identify by the tri local trivialization you are using, so you identify your section to a vector column uh, of, of sections of PQ forms, okay? So you are writing this in terms of the frame. And, and then what, what you get is that uh, the formula with this trivialization, 
So here this is just the, uh, the R tuple uh, given by uh, the differential of each component. But then you get an extra term, which comes from here, which is just plus A wedge uh, the various components. So you, you may wonder where uh, this sign has, why, why it has disappeared. Gamma, gamma, yeah. Gamma. OK, this is because uh, this is uh, of type PQ, and this is, uh, this is of degree 1. So when you commute a form of, of, of degree P plus Q in a 1 form, you get precisely this sign. But now this, these forms become before. You have the A lambda mu's here, which multiply the S lambdas, uh, whereas here they are after. And so if you commute, uh, you just compensate the sign, so the sign disappears. Okay? So this is the basic formula. So actually, uh, this is equivalent to a uh, Leibniz rule. Uh, a connection, uh, so the Leibniz rule is equivalent to having uh, something which has this form. Okay. Uh, actually, if you pick an absolutely random uh, matrix, so gamma, here, this will satisfy Leibniz rule, uh, as you can easily check. So conversely, so conversely, uh, this defines a connection. Sorry? Locally. Locally. Locally, uh, where where uh, the forms are defined, which means uh, on the open set where the trivialization, uh, so where the trivialization is defined. Okay, so now as now assume that E is holomorphic. Uh, that means that you can pick uh, the frame here to be holomorphic. Depending, of course, uh, well, and then if you have different uh, uh, different trivializations, theta alpha and theta beta, then you have frames uh, which correspond to these, and then you have the transition matrices uh, that are holomorphic. And then, uh, if you split. Of course, the uh, differential operator D uh, splits in one zero and, and zero one part, so you can split accordingly. Uh, D, capital D is capital D prime plus capital D double prime, and then of course uh, this is just uh, corresponds to splitting gamma, which is a matrix of one forms in one zero forms and zero one forms. But now, uh, saying that, uh, so uh, this is a random connection, so you pick gamma randomly. But saying that it is compatible with a uh, complex structure means that this part is zero if the frame is holomorphic. So,
so observation. So D compatible with complex structure. Which by definition means that uh, D double prime is D del bar uh, means that the zero one part here is zero. Uh, Namely, uh, gamma is of type uh, one zero. Uh, simply because uh, here uh, uh, the de uh, the del bar here of E lambda should be zero if you're holomorphic, uh, and therefore uh, this form should be of type one zero. Okay, so now. Uh, Curvature of a connection. This is a very fundamental concept. So you just uh, take the square. So you compute So if you now I will uh, simplify notation, okay? So I will I will uh, just identify by trivialization, of course it depends on the trivialization, but I will really identify S and the R tuple, just to simplify notation. So then in, in this notation, of course it depends on theta, I will just denote by DS uh, the component-wise uh, differentiation here, it depends on theta. So this is the formula. So now just iterate. So you compute d square. OK, so you have d of ds plus gamma wedge s plus gamma wedge ds plus gamma s. But then uh, d squared, uh, this is just the ordinary vector differential, so you get 0. And then uh, you get d of gamma wedge s, so this is d gamma wedge s, minus, because gamma is of, type of degree 1. So this is this term. And then uh, plus gamma wedge ds plus gamma wedge s. So this cancels. And then you get So uh, this looks very simple, but it's absolutely fundamental that if you take the square of the connection, you have no more derivatives here acting on the section. It's just the product of a two-form. So I will denote this by Rd wedge s. So and this is, by definition, the curvature, curvature tensor. And uh, this is a, a two form. Uh, which may mix components of type two zero, one one, and zero two. Uh, and acts on, on uh, sections of E, so it, it is values in the endomorphisms of E. So you can do this like this. It's globally defined because it's the, it's the square of a globally defined operator. But locally, uh, 
uh, locally in the trivialization. Uh, just computed as uh, by this this formula here. Okay, uh, uh, of course, a very important special case. Uh, if the rank of the bundle is one, uh, then gamma is just a one-one matrix. So it's just a form. So it's a one form. But then, of course, uh, the wedge product of a one form by itself is zero. And then uh, a curvature is just locally uh, d gamma. So it's just a closed two form. It's not an exact two form because gamma is only local. OK, so now uh, we'll end this. I'm sorry for those, for many of you who already know. I will uh, explain a situation when you have a Hermitian metric. So now suppose uh, E is equipped with a Hermitian structure. So this means that you have a Hermitian metric on each fiber. Uh, so you decompose with a frame. And then, of course, you compute the Hermitian uh, product here. So depending whether you are a mathematician or physicist, you put the bar in different place. So let me put the bar here. OK. Uh, and then uh, you have, of course, a form taken on the frame. And these are, uh, the, so you get a matrix, which I will denote by capital H. So this is a Hermitian, positive definite Hermitian matrix, uh, which actually defines the, the Hermitian metric. Uh, more generally, uh, you can define a Hermitian pairing so between PQ forms and say P prime Q prime forms And then you get a, so you have to take care, a P plus Q prime and Q plus P prime scalar form. And the formula, so you, you have S T here, which can be written just in this way except that S lambda now is a PQ form, and T mu now is a P prime Q prime form. And now you associate 
the Hermitian pairing, which I will denote uh, by braces, so ST between braces H, so this is by definition. So you pair the frame by H, but then you just take the wedge product of, of the forms. So this will be S lambda wedge T mu bar. So this is actually a form of type P plus Q prime Q plus P prime. And then this form you multiply by uh, the complex function, which is just the emission product of E lambda by E mu, which is the same as uh, H lambda mu here. So again, again, if you identify by the trivialization, you identify uh, this with the components, and then you get the formula that this is just S uh, transpose you know, like this, S transpose uh, times or wedge H wedge T bar. H is a matrix, so all three are matrices now, but with this identification. But this is of type 0, 0, because it's just a function. And you view it as a wedge product. OK. This is, of course, a, this is a local writing depending on trivialization. So this is transpose. OK, and now uh, you are not interested in uh, random uh, connections, but you want connections that are compatible with the Hermitian metric. So this is the definition. So a connection D is compatible. with uh, the Hermitian structure H. If uh, you have the Leibniz formula for this pairing. So namely, if when you compute the normal exterior derivative of the pairing, what you get is, but now you have to take the, uh, the connection here. Uh, so this is the definition. And then uh, it is an easy exercise. I will not, will not do it here. So in fact, you may take holomorphic frames, but you can take also uh, unitary frames. So you assume, assume that you take uh, the frame E lambda not to be holomorphic, to be just smooth, but uh, orthonormal. So take. Take it to be H orthonormal, not, not necessarily uh, holomorphic. OK, so then uh, the, connection, the connection is just written as I ex explained by some uh, component-wise uh, exterior derivative plus an arbitrary matrix. 
And here it's arbitrary. Okay, but now you just you just plug this here, gamma wedge s, and here you will have the gamma wedge t. But then in this case, because uh, you take h autonomous, then uh, your formula here is just with h identity here in this case. Okay, so in this case, because it is h autonomous, the pairing takes the simple form, so it's just the s transpose times t wedge. So uh, if you want this formula to be true, the condition is very easy to see that gamma is uh, uh, actually uh, anti-symmetric. So it should, it should satisfy gamma star equal minus gamma. So it should be in the, in the Lie algebra of, of the unitary group, which is the, uh, of course, anti-symmetric matrix. So condition uh, in that case, so uh, D is compatible with H. Means that uh, gamma star minus gamma, so this is anti skew symmetric. But take care, take care. Not in a holomorphic frame. The co this is a condition in in an autonomous frame. And of course, because you are complex, uh, gamma is the sum of one zero and zero one part. Here, this need not be zero because you didn't take a holomorphic frame. And then the condition is equivalent again. So this condition now just means that Actually, uh, you have this formula because you have complex conjugation. So the complex co conjugation uh, maps one zero forms to zero one forms. So actually, uh, if you take one part, it completely determines the other part. So this means that the, the condition that it is Hermitian compatible, you can fix randomly any of these parts, and then the other is determined just by the Hermitian symmetry condition. Okay. Uh, as a consequence, so this is a theorem, but well, well-known theorem. There exists. Uh, so if E is Hermitian holomorphic, so you have a Hermitian structure, and you assume holomorphic. Then uh, there exists a unique connection D, which I will denote by DH, because it is associated with H, uh, such that first it is compatible with complex structures, so uh, the zero one part is del bar, and uh, the connection is uh, compatible with H. Well, the reason is that This part has been fixed, and then by just, what I just explained, the other part is automatically fixed by uh, the Hermitian symmetry condition. Uh, let, let us compute this. I assume, I assume holomorphic. Uh, if it is not holomorphic, you can always find a connection on one side just by a partition of unity, okay? So you 
compute, say, uh, you, you take a trivialization, you compute del bar in this trivialization, and then you glue everything by a partition of unity. You will get a connection that way. Okay, if, if you have, in general, it, suppose you have local connections, so you have open sets, you have open set U alpha, and you have connections D alpha, which don't necessarily match. Then if you take a partition of unity, then the sum of psi alpha d alpha will define a global connection. You can always glue connections by partitions of unity. But they are not, they, they will not necessarily uh, be nice connections. I mean, they might, it will be random. But if you have a Hermitian structure, then once you have selected, for, you can do this, for instance, for del bar. Okay, you fix, uh, you fix randomly uh, this part, and then there will be a unique choice for uh, D prime, okay? So if you assume holomorphic, then you have this nice del bar, and then you just get the other one uh, by uh, the Hermitian condition. Okay, let, let us compute in this case. So let us compute. It's easy to compute. Okay, so computation. Of, uh, this is called the Chern connection. This one. So let, let us make the calculation. Okay, so you just uh, trivialize. You just trivialize so you identify locally your bundle uh, you identify locally to, uh, to u times cr okay and then you have a holomorphic frame. And then uh, you have the Hermitian matrix. Which is given by uh, the Hermitian inner product of your, uh, of your frame here. But then because you fix uh, the holomorphic frame, you cannot you cannot expect this to be, uh, to be autonormal. Uh, we will see this. Therefore, uh, you have an arbitrary matrix. And then uh, the pairing, well, I, I just identify. So it's just uh, given as I wrote by S transpose wedge H wedge T. OK, now take take the exterior derivative okay so you have three parts ds transpose but again, uh, ds is just means ds1, dsr. Okay, so I'm just computing. I'm just identifying here two the matrices. Um, so wedge h wedge t plus. Okay, so now s is of type. So you have minus one to the degree of s, s transpose, and then you have dh. Wedge T, and then H is of uh, degree zero, so it doesn't switch more. So you get plus third term, which is S transpose wedge H wedge, and I forgot bar here. Okay, wedge D T bar. Okay. 
But now, um, your connection should be of the form like this. But because you take a holomorphic frame, uh, gamma should be of type 1, 0. Which means that you have two parts. And gamma is equal to gamma prime. So this is just del. And the d double prime uh, is just del bar. This is the assumption. OK. So now, of course, uh, the term that governs the calculation is dh. And this dh, OK, uh, here, dh is del h plus del bar h. Um, you have you have to take uh, this part with s, and this part you have to take with the t bar here if you don't want things to be mixed up because you are not allowed you are not allowed to change del bar s. So the only way of splitting this, the only way you are allowed to split this. So, what I'm going to do is to put here but of course I have to transpose okay so let me ignore this so uh, I have to compute wedge s something this will be easier the other way. So wedge h, wedge t bar, plus minus 1 to the degree of s, s transpose, wedge h, wedge, so dt, uh, everything bar, and now if I want things to uh, work together, I have to take h bar minus 1 here. And I have to take d, d h bar. So if you just compute. So the, the del h bar bar becomes del bar h. And you multiply here by h minus 1, which combines with h. So h is killed. And then uh, you, you just got this part OK. Just got this part OK coming from dh here. And then you see that uh, precisely if you add the same thing here, it's OK. Because the transpose, of course, h bar, h bar transpose is uh, is the admission adjoint. It's h star, so it's h. So if you just do this, and uh, then my h minus one cancels. So this is the unique way you can do this. So you get gamma here. So the formula. So you have this here, and then here we have found the formula. So gamma is 
are h bar minus 1 del of h bar. Okay, and now the curvature. Well, so you have to compute d square. So it splits in three parts. But this part is 0. And this part, actually because of a Hermitian condition, uh, you can check by a Leibniz rule uh, that you have always this formula. Therefore, uh, d square is Q symmetric. And because it is Q symmetric, and the 0, 2 part is 0, so this part has to be 0 also. Therefore, you are left, you are left with just the 1, 1 part. So for the chain connection, uh, the, the, the curvature, in that case, the curvature uh, is a 1, 1 form. So it's, it's slightly better than in general. OK, and then uh, we can get the explicit formula. Well, uh, just compute. I uh, will not do it here, just give the result. So the result is that uh, locally, in a trivialization, you get, well, you compute this part. So you compute this. And then uh, you have uh, this. And then you just get, uh, in fact, it's easy to see. Well, no, maybe I do it. OK. So it's just. Just um, del of del bar s plus so uh, So this, this is what you get when you compute this. And then you see that these parts cancel. And then uh, you have also a cancellation here. And then you get that Rd is just the del of this part. Uh, del, uh, sorry, I Use things here. Mm, no. Should be the formula. Okay, plus del of this. Okay, so you get del bar. This is the formula. And you see that it's a, it's a 1, 1, 4 with values uh, in the uh, endomorphisms of E. And, uh, So 
So now a special case is rank one. Okay, so then, of course, uh, everything is uh, much easier. Uh, then you have a Hamilton matrix, it's just uh, one coefficient, positive real. And then it is very convenient to denote this as a function locally. Which means that you have a, a frame, which is this one section. You have a frame. And then, uh, okay, uh, the norm of this frame with respect to h is just this function. So this function is just minus log of the Hamishan norm. And then, uh, if you compute this, Well, just del bar of exponential plus phi del of exponential minus phi. And then uh, it's clear that you get del del bar phi. So this is a is given by a one one form, which is simply the complex Hessian. Uh, so the uh, the curvature. So you have the formula in that case that d square d square of a section locally in a trivialization is just del del bar phi wedge s. So this is just the complex Hessian of of the weight function. So phi is called the weight, the weight of the Hermitian metric. And then uh, it's com completely canonically defined, uh, associated with uh, the. Uh, well, this is a unique chain connection here. And then you have a concept of positivity. So uh, it will say by definition that uh, the line bundle. So if if the rank is one. You say that uh, uh, E H has positive curvature, if uh, this uh, form here is positive, but uh, it's a one one form, so it's just given by the complex derivatives. Actually, you put i here. So you compute uh, the second derivatives, d2 phi over d phi j, dz j, which dz k bar. It should be a positive definite Hermitian matrix. In other words, the weight phi should be a strictly plurisubharmonic function. So for those of you who don't know a, uh, what are Ploissimani functions, I take this as a definition in the smooth case. Okay. So uh, Ploissimani means it's a, it's a convex function uh, in terms of complex coordinates. So phi is Ploissimani if uh, at each point uh, this is a 
semi-positive Hermitian matrix. The complex Hessian is semi-positive. And strictly means that it's, it's def positive definite. Okay, so uh, you have a very elegant uh, concept uh, here. Uh, you have the curvature. And uh, the, the bundle has positive curvature means exactly that uh, the weight functions of the Hermitian matrix here are plurisobharmonic. So uh, exactly given by uh, holomorphic convexity. Of course, uh, you need also uh, similar concepts uh, when the bundle has rank larger than one. So a uh, case of arbitrary, arbitrary rank. Uh, then, uh, well, well, I should introduce some more notation and definition. So, um, Actually, uh, one defines the first chunk class of a line bundle in this case. So the rank again is one. Well, you, ca you can take this to be just uh, the class of what I will denote by theta EH. And theta EH, so it's a unique, it's a notation by definition for I over 2 pi times uh, the 1, 1 form, which is which I denoted by Rd here, which locally is just uh, I over 2 pi uh, dd bar phi. So it's the, uh, it's the, the form here uh, given by the curvature. So many of you probably already know, but those who don't know may wonder why you put I over 2 pi. Well, the reason to put i is because you want something real. So i makes and then uh, you take the cohomology class here. So it's a cohomology class of a 1 1 form. So it's actually you view it as a cohomology class in Durham cohomology. And then it is real because uh, of the i. And uh, it's easy to see that if you change the metric, uh, you change by your count boundary. So uh, this class doesn't depend on the choice of the Hermitian metric. So, um, so it's well defined. But you can view it also in double cohomology uh, because it's a one-one form. If you're on a compact Keller manifold, for instance, uh, this will also define a one-one class. So, so if X is compact Keller, you have Hodge decomposition. So I assume that this is known. We'll not use it much. So here you compute Doram cohomology, that is cohomology with, uh, for the exterior derivative, and here uh, cohomology for, for d bar. Uh, if x is compact Keller, you have such an identification, and especially uh, this contains uh, H11. But because it is of type 11, actually uh, you get a form which is already in the 11 part. So actually, 
sits this uh, class in this case sits in the real part of H11 which uh, of course sits in the complex part uh, which sits in H2 and in the real part of the H2. Okay. Uh, and now the 2 pi, uh, the 2 pi uh, makes it actually integral. So the reason for introducing 2 pi is that actually uh, if you uh, identify this with singular cohomology, it's going to be with a z coefficient. So actually the choice of 2 pi leads uh, to uh, the fact that it's the uh, real it's the image is the image of a class which is an integral class which is usually denoted by C1 of E. Okay, so this will be explained in the notes uh, rather quickly, but well, not use it so much. <coughs> okay. So now to conclude, uh, I will go to case of higher rank. Okay, uh, so then uh, the curvature tensor is still defined uh, by definition to be i over 2 pi times this form. And now uh, it turns out that this is a real form with values in the Hermitian endomorphisms of E. This is skew symmetric, but because you multiply by I, it becomes Hermitian symmetric. And therefore, uh, well, you have a following formula. Okay, suppose, uh, well, you are going to, well, you write it in coordinates, so it will look like something like this. So this is the 1-1 one, one part. And then you have the endomorphism part. So you take a frame. And so this is the, uh, the matrix, which has coefficient 1 somewhere here in line lambda and, and uh, row mu, or like this. Uh, OK, so this is an endomorphism of, of E. Of course, uh, the coefficients here depend on point Z. OK, and then uh, you can define a uh, the associated uh, Hermitian form, curvature Hermitian form, on the tensor product 
of Tx by E, which I will denote by theta E H twiddle. So you pick here an element which is just an element in the product, tensor product Tx by E. OK, and then uh, it's just obvious what you are going to compute. Uh, so here you have a sum over jk between 1 and n, and lambda mu are uh, between 1 and the rank. So you are going to take the sum over all these. And then with respect to jk, you have the uh, tangent vector. So you take cj, ck bar. And then here, you're going to take uh, the v lambda, v mu bar. And this is defined in a canonical way. It's completely isomorphic notation to, to this notation. And uh, now, this is a Hermitian symmetric form. This comes from a condition that I just wrote. And you can require this to be uh, positive. And this is, by definition, a uh, concept of uh, Griffith's positivity. So you say that uh, EH is Griffith's positive. By definition, if this form here is positive for all vectors C in the tangent bundle and V in E, same fiber, of course, at Z, and of course, C non zero and V non zero. Okay, so I'm already slightly over time. So um, basic facts are that uh, positivity is related in a very strong way to the concept of ampleness in algebraic geometry. So in fact, uh, you have a famous result of Kodaira which tell you that the line bundle has positive curvature if and only if it is ample. So it has, uh, has a positive, has a metric H with positive curvature if and only if uh, E is ample in the sense of algebraic geometry on a projective algebraic variety. So you assume that X, well, just compact, actually, but well, OK. Assume that it's projective algebraic. Uh, then, in this case, uh, so ample, mm, OK, I think I'm over time, so I will explain the uh, next lecture for those who don't know, or maybe how many don't know what is ample? OK, so quite a number. OK, so maybe I will have to start the uh, next lecture by this. Uh, and, uh, of course, you have a similar result for higher rank, but which is not known. It's a main question, main conjecture, well, main question. So in case of higher rank, 
In fact, you know that if exists H with positive curvature, in the sense of Griffiths, then E is ample. So this is a well-known theorem. I, I will explain uh, next lecture. Okay, so this is a very important fact. But the converse here, the converse is an unsolved uh, question since a very long time. So the question was raised by Griffiths uh, at the end of the 60s, uh, still unsolved. Sixty-eight something. Okay, so I will explain uh, next time uh, what is meant by ampleness. So apparently, uh, quite a number of you don't know. So I will rapidly recall. And, uh, so we will study. Uh, we will start to study uh, hyperbolic varieties, and in some sense, uh, hyperbolic varieties exhibit negativity of curvature. So. Uh, in some very weak sense, uh, hyperbolic varieties have negative curvature. For dimension one, this is completely OK. Uh, this is rank one. So in rank one, everything is easier. So we will uh, explain our relation in, in rank one. OK, but, uh, but in general, the uh, situation is very hard. So uh, I will enter more in, into more depth in these questions uh, relating uh, the curvature with the, uh, the hyperbolicity property in terms of uh, Kobayashi uh, metric. So this will be the, the, essentially the picture for, for the next lecture tomorrow. Okay, I stop here. <laughs>